Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the HP Pavilion 15-inch laptop for 2020. Now, this does have the 11th gen Intel refresh. Uh, the build you're about to see retails for roughly $1,000. I'll include a link in the description, and this is aimed at being a budget conscious laptop that can do a little bit of everything. So you may have noticed I already have this open and that's because uh, the shipper, not HP, who sent it over for review, but the carrier spilled some kind of oil all over it. It's gross. So I'm going to just get to pulling it right out of the box. Um, still wanted to give you some form of an unboxing, but I think it's an oil slick, frankly, what they were able to do here. And um, hopefully it doesn't stain any of my equipment because that wouldn't be very nice, right? There's the power brick falling out, and that is pretty much everything from the box. So let me get the oh-so-gross box out of here. And when I say oh-so-gross, I mean, at first, I mean, I, I took pictures of it just so HP would be aware this was not done by me. And hopefully, nothing on the interior got damaged because it was so vile. Now, this specific uh, build, which again, I'm gonna link in the description, has an Intel, as I mentioned, uh, 11th gen Core i7 processor. That's the 1165G7. Uh, and then it's complemented by Intel's Iris, Iris X uh, integrated graphics. So some setup instructions out of the box. Let's go ahead and pull this apart. And this is actually officially the first uh, 11th gen product I will be covering, and that's part of the reason I said send it over. I'm still waiting on the Spectre. I know a lot of you are looking for that review, uh, and that will come, but right now uh, HP's supply chain is a little bit, um, I'll call it clogged. It's going retail first, uh, so while you can already pick that up at Best Buy, uh, I'm having some trouble getting it to share with all of you. So, the power brick, pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing crazy there. This is not, again, it's a budget laptop, so we're not looking at something uh, that's designed to be uh, fancy. It's just designed to get the job done, and that's reflected in the overall build. I say that because uh, while the build is in the uh, natural silver and feels like it's um, a metal build for the most part, uh, you're quickly reminded that it is not an ultra premium machine simply because first of all it's a pavilion that's a given but the display is not high res we are not even looking at a full hd display believe it or not and the only reason that i said send it over is because as i mentioned uh, i know that there are a lot of people out there that on a budget are still going to be interested in this regardless of the display's resolution and 250 nit brightness because its inter internal components are still fairly solid and build quality at least from what i can see so far is pretty nice now in terms of what else is under the hood besides that uh, core i7 1165 g7 with the iris x we've got 16 gigs of ddr4 uh, ram as well as a half terabyte uh, nvme drive uh, and uh, above and beyond that it does not have wi-fi 6 i'm just checking the specs here to make sure i don't give you any incorrect information uh, it's got three cell uh, battery we'll see how how well that performs uh, and i don't believe it has thunderbolt 3 on board uh, we do have a, a sd card reader a fingerprint scanner uh, windows hello i believe it's compatible uh, capable of with that ir uh, camera array right there but let's take a look around the machine again this is something i expect to see on sale even though it is uh, an 11th gen build this is the type of thing that I'm not going to call Black Friday material, but it's a pavilion. It's meant to be affordable and cost effective. So you can see right there we have a Type A port, your power port, uh, as well as what appears to be a Kensington lock. Nothing on the back here except the pavilion branding, which hopefully you can see. And on the left side of the machine, that's where we have HDMI out, a another Type A port, uh, a what is marked to look like it's Thunderbolt 3, but I, I don't believe it is, and a micro SD card slot, and then last but not least, a headphone microphone combo jack. And that's pretty much it. Let's see if it powers up. Again, I, uh, this is something that, you know, is 
hopefully going to be something that makes users happy. Uh, the power button, let's see, did I miss that? Did I miss where the power button is or is it on the actual machine itself, meaning on the front and I'm not aware? Um, I'm not seeing a power button. Maybe I'm losing my mind, it's possible. Um, so I'm not seeing it. Uh, I thought maybe it would be, oh, there it is. I knew it had to be on the keyboard, right? And it is booting up. Now, if I had one nitpick with this machine, I've already mentioned it, which is its IPS panel just not even being full HD. Uh, but again, I will reiterate, this is about being cost effective, not a uh, high-end bleeding edge machine. And between its processor, uh, the amount of RAM, this is the type of PC that if you need it for college, granted, hopefully it's virtual learning at this point, uh, but students in general, I think that's exactly who this type of machine is great for. Uh, anyone who is just looking for an affordable current system, and by current, I mean with the latest uh, hardware, at least when it comes to processing power. Uh, and the speakers, I'll, I'll see how uh, they perform. But remember, this is not a touch screen, so don't think that it is. Let me mute Cortana. Uh, but it's, again, this is all about being budgetary. And I think that in the holiday season, it's something that, of course, comes to mind, especially through the course of a pandemic. Uh, it does have some things that inherently I do like, even though this wouldn't be necessarily my pick. Um, everyone who follows my channel, my subscribers know I'm very big on the Spectre series of uh, HP's laptops. But what I do like that they have, and this is standard across HP, just like the power button right now has an LED uh, to let you know that it's on. Your mute button also has it. I could have done that rather than uh, silencing Cortana through on screen. Uh, and uh, the keyboard generally is pretty solid. Also, the trackpad is fairly large. So if that's a concern of yours, how large is the trackpad going to be? Uh, HP's got your back here. That is something that they've made sure of with the Pavilion line. Now, how capable Iris X is, is going to be the other thing because uh, this is a fairly low res display. Uh, viewing angles are not great. That's to be expected. But when it comes to gaming, that's the interesting part about these more budget friendly machines now with Intel's 11th gen is that gaming should be a little bit more uh, practical on it, especially since you won't be downscaling from 4K or full HD. And that's again, working off of Iris X integrated, not anything dedicated. So we'll see how it performs. Again, this is really a budget conscious purchase. This is not uh, the barn burner, the high performer. It's more about getting exactly what you pay for, which is a functional machine. This is for those of you who are not looking for something flashy, but are just looking for something for your money, literally. So I'll see how it performs. We'll see how the speakers are. We'll see how uh, it deals with thermals, how hot it gets. I mean, the actual design does resemble much of HP's lineup uh, in terms of uh, heat dissipation and the ventilation that I'm seeing on the bottom. Uh, I believe the RAM is soldered, so that's another thing. Keep in mind, if you're buying this, you're not going to be able to up upgrade that. I do not think. I'm not 100 on that. Uh, in my follow-up, I will be 100 on that. Uh, and uh, when it comes to the internal storage, the NVMe drive, half terabyte is, I think, perfectly fine for uh, where this machine tries to sit uh, in the hierarchy of pricing but I'm pretty sure that can be upgraded. So that's another thing just to be aware of. Uh, but that's pretty much it. We'll see what battery life is like. We'll see how that 11th gen Core i7 CPU performs. And that's kind of the beauty of this machine is that this is going to be one of your least expensive ways to get access to uh, a 11th gen Core i7 Intel processor. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Again, the uh, HP Pavilion 15 for 2020 uh, and my first 11th gen taste here. So we'll see how it performs. And of course, I will be following up and letting all of you know. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.